So over the years, I've done a little bit of uh, metric tap and die work, but not not much. And uh, this is the accumulation of the metric taps and dies, kind of a hodgepodge mix of things that I've probably collected over a period of oh, 40 years or more. And uh, so obviously I don't do a whole lot. But I do try to keep my eye out for things that, you know, maybe someday I might need and the price is right. And uh, the last few months, that's been exactly what's happened. So the first thing that happened to improve the situation is I uh, ran across an estate sale where uh, the uh, fellow's wife was selling uh, a whole bunch of his stuff. And I got a fair price on these. It wasn't crazy, but it, it was a, you know, a small but complete set. It didn't have any missing things along the way. So, uh, you know, it probably doubled or at least, you know, added 25% to my collection. The thing that really uh, got me excited about storing these things in a more organized fashion was this set right here that I bought. Um, a machine shop had gone out of business and he was getting down toward the end of stuff. That I've been up there a couple times and bought things from him, but uh, last time I went through I found all these uh, metrics and some of them are real oddballs. Uh, they're, you know, like for instance, I think it's the 12 millimeter stuff. There's like four different thread pitches. Um, the 11 millimeter, 9.5 or 8, 6.5 and 9 millimeter and 3.5 and, you know, was there even a 4.6 in there um, with different thread pitches. So um, this really underscored the need to come up with a way of storing them a little more organized. And um, I did my American tap and drills uh, to fit my list of cabinet. I made a, I did a 3D print of a bunch of trays that were custom fitted to those. So uh, I didn't video that. This one here, I am going to show you uh, uh, parts of the process as I go along and and uh, get this organized. I'm looking for a place to store these uh, the new uh, taps and dies. Uh, I had a couple of empty drawers in one of these uh, assortment racks, or what do we want to call them. They're basically 19 inches wide, 18 inches wide, 18 by 12, I think is what it is. But anyway, uh, you, you know, Lawson or uh, Car Products, uh, MSC, Fastenal, um, they all have them, and they all fit each other's racks pretty much. Um, think they're probably most of them if not all of them are made by Durham so anyway I picked out one of the empty drawers and I'm gonna have to make a little modification to it so we'll come back to you in a second so I decided to use this drawer here it's got uh, some four little dividers in here that are spot welded to the bottom of the of the uh, box and I really don't want them in there because I can pre-print some plastic trays. It'll be a, a, like a quarter or a third of the, uh, uh, either six or four of them will fill up the whole, the whole box. And I can print them, you know, three high or two high so they're stackable and get lots and lots of, uh, of taps in here. Anyway, I marked each of them with a little dot of, uh, of uh, Sharpie there. And uh, I got a, a 3 16 end mill on the end of a Chinese chuck, on the end of a fine threaded bolt, on my, my big chuck. That way I can reach down in here without running into anything. So let's, uh, basically the idea is I want to cut right through the spot weld and not bore a hole all the way through the bottom of the, of the uh, shelf. So let's see how it goes.
thing. Just gently come down on it. One down. Anyway, you get the idea and if it's a bit of work to keep moving the camera and dodging it while I'm hanging on to everything. So I'll come back when I got it all done. Well, that's what it looks like when we're done. It looks like uh, about half my holes went through. Um, not the end of the world because it's going to be plastic trays covering that up anyway. So anyhow. Uh, and I hit it with, hit it with a, a quick uh, coat of paint and then uh, start making uh, plastic dividers for it. I'm going to take a minute here to show you um, how these 3D models were built uh, that would are used to create the uh, the 3D print. So I'm using uh, Autodesk Fusion 360. I am a rank amateur at doing this, but uh, here you go. So uh, uh, the walls and the floor, all the dividers, all that stuff are all eighth of an inch. And uh, on one edge of each of the cells, I have it expanded to a quarter of an inch. So I have enough room to stick uh, adhesive labels on it. And you can see it's just a, so it's just a little shelf over the 45 degree buttress underneath it. And then to get small round items out of the trays easier, uh, I put a little radius inside of each of these. So uh, once I've got the drawing all done, which actually doesn't take very long, I can do them. Now that I've done a few of them, I can do one of these in about you now 15, 20 minutes. So uh, we go to make, we go to 3D print, and uh, this is the piece where we send it to the Cura software which uh, uh, converts it into G-code for the printer. So we choose what we're going to print, hit OK, and Cura launches with this drawing in it, and you can see it right there. Um, it slices it, so it actually goes in uh, by computer-wise and, and peels off individual slices and looks at the footprint of that slice and it starts at the bottom of course and and uh, so it, get, it gets you the G code to print the, print the very first slice and then the second slice and so on. There's lots of these. This particular one was fairly busy and uh, the print time is uh, eight hour, 18 hours and 23 minutes. I don't think I ever printed this one. I, I don't know. I may have. Um, the uh, It uses uh, almost 80 meters of filament printing temperature on the print head is uh, 210 and the build plate is 65. Infill density, so all the in inner parts of these features actually just have a shell around them and the rest of that eighth inch thickness is filled in with a grid inside of it. 
uh, that occupies 20% of the space inside of it. Um, go down here a little further. A build plate adhesion. I have trouble with it peeling up. I can show you that in a second. But uh, anyway, um, so I put a raft around it, and the raft uh, is some this is designed to stick to the plate real well, and so it kind of goes around. You see this white area here is the area occupied by the raft. Save it to a file, and then I take the file over to the uh, the, the uh, ANET printer and uh, it's on a micro SD card and just tell it to print it. That's pretty much all there is to it and the uh, the uh, ANET A8 is uh, kind of a clone of a Prusa i3 so I use all the settings uh, since there's not an ANET setting in there I use the, the Prusa i3 setting and that's about all there is to the uh, 3D part. Uh, I really won't show the the actual printing because it is probably worse than watching paint dry. So, This is the uh, 3D printer I'm using for, well, it's the only one I got. It actually belongs to my son. Um, this is an ANET A8, which is kind of a Prusa um, clone. The plate is 8x8, and when I'm uh, printing, I have a little trouble with adhesion, so I use a raft all the time. It limits my actual component size to yeah, seven and an eighth, seven and a quarter, something like that. Um, the raft takes up the rest of the rest of the um, space here. So uh, not much to it, just a basic uh, 3D printer. And uh, the basic printer costs about 200 bucks, so uh, can't go wrong with that. Okay, here's kind of a last look at the uh, metric tap and die set. That box for it and everything. We got this all cleaned up and painted. And uh, gotta move some stuff out of the way here. The smaller taps and dies are gonna be on the bottom shelf. The bigger ones are gonna be on the top shelf. That goes at the top. Goes at the bottom. That goes at the bottom. That goes at the top. Went like that. Okay. And then just a, f a filler to keep things from sliding around too much. Put those in there like that. So this is all the big ones. And then for the uh, little ones, there's a tray that's going to sit in here. And it has I glued it together just to hold it while I was assembling it. But They just the uh, 3D printed. They just look like this. Got some countersunk holes so I can dimple these and have a flat on the bottom. Not that it was real critical that that be the case, but. And one of them came unglued, but again, that really doesn't matter. They're all going to be screwed into place anyway. It's just to hold them while I was assembling it. Yep. Okay. And it's built like this, so this is the uh, the handhold. Okay, get you a little close up here. So there's the, uh, the bottom, Just starting kind of smaller to larger, larger yet, larger and great big. These two trays are mostly just for miscellaneous things in this little slot here. Just this irregularity in the pattern that I needed to have, so I just uh, filled it in with just 
miscellaneous places. And then this drops in here. And the small taps are on the bottom. And the dies, most of the dies are on the bottom. And I needed a little wedge to trim that up. So there we go. So that's the that's the whole set. They go anywhere from a two millimeter point four and a a 24 millimeter uh, three and the dies go up to uh, 22 millimeters and one and a half pitch down to three millimeters and a 0.6 pitch so there you are I uh, hope you like it and it was a lot of work so a lot of this miscellaneous tedium uh, now I can lift the back whole thing back out again to get to the bottom well, thanks for watching, and uh, as always, uh, if you liked what you see, uh, click a like. If you like what you see on the channel, subscribe. And until the uh, next video comes out, happy trails.